to disclose no financial or other interest for any gain of any kind with regard to this presentation. The principle of cell block is that salvaging residual sample by concentrating the cells and embedding it in an appropriate medium. Cell block can concentrate the cells in a limited area without loss of tissue architecture. The method can be applied to any cytology sample with adequate cell amount and this residual sediment can be preserved as a cell block for future use as for diagnostic work and research works. The advantages are multiple sections of the same material can be cut for routine or ancillary techniques. Cell block will be available even after the primary sample is discarded. Cell blocks are useful for immunohistochemistry for differentiating reactive mesothelial cell from mesothelioma and adenocarcinoma elucidating occult primary site of malignancy, characterization of undifferentiated and poorly differentiated tumors and also for lymphoproliferative disorders, prognostication work, ancillary test and a molecular test. There are various methods for preparing cell block. My talk will be concentrating on plasma thromboplastin method, which is practiced at a Tata Memorial Hospital. All the processing is done inside a biosafety cabinet. Ideally, a class 2 type A2 biosafety cabinet is used. In addition, the personnel also wears gloves, masks, and aprons. The equipment and reagents required for this procedure include biosafety cabinet, centrifuge machine, screw cap and disposable plastic centrifuge tubes of 15 ml capacity, pasture pipettes, applicator sticks, thromboplastin, pooled plasma, tissue cassettes, Wardman number one filter paper, and a 10% neutral buffered formaldehyde. The plasma, plasma thromboplastin method is useful for preparing cell block from even less than 0.5 ml of sediment. The procedure consists of five steps. The first step is centrifuge and separate the sediment from the fluid. Then add three drops of pooled plasma to the sediment, then mix well. Then add three drops of thromboplastin, again mix well, and allow to stand the material for five minutes to form a clot. Last step is to slit the cloth into a wet filter paper and a wrapping. The approximate cost of the test is 50 rupees. Now I will take you through the video grab of the procedure. You can see here the sample plastic centrifuge tubes of 15 ml capacity with the screw capped bottles, screw capped centrifuge tubes, plasma taken in a 1 ml plasma in a test tube thromboplastin, fixative for the cell block, 10% in neutral buffered formaldehyde. And also, we require applicator sticks for mixing the sample, mixing the sample applicator sticks. And we can also see we need pasture pipettes. We need tissue cassettes pencil for labeling and a small pieces of what my number one filter paper. The first step is take out the sample and with the help of the applicator stick, mix the sample thoroughly so that the sample will be clearly homogenized. Thoroughly homogenize the sample and slowly take out the stick and keep the stick securely in a test tube. And take out the centrifuge tube, remove the cap, and slowly put the sample into the centrifuge tube. Care has to be taken without any spillage. Care has to be taken not to spill the sample. Once the sample is put, put the lid, secure the lid properly. And now take another centrifuge tube and fill it with the fluid sample. Slowly we have to fill. And once it is filled, again, put the lid. I'm just leading the tube. Now we have to balance the tube. Just see whether the sample is balanced properly. Here you can see one tube is not balanced. So add a little more sample so as to balance it properly. Put the lid, secure it tightly and keep the specimen bottle secure. Now next step is centrifugation. Take the sample, 
to the centrifuge machine and keep it in opposite chambers. Close the centrifuge machine and start the machine and centrifugation is done at 2000 RPM for 10 minutes. At the end of 10 minutes run, take out the sample from the centrifuge and see the sediment is already separated from the supernatant. Now, the next step is separating the sediment from the supernatant. So, we have to open the tube and take a new test tube and slowly decant the supernatant very carefully without interrupting the sediment at the bottom. Care has to be taken. The sediment need not be disrupted while transferring the supernatant. Now the supernatant is almost completely separated and the tube is kept aside. Now this is the tube with the sediment we kept aside and the next step is adding the plasma. Take the pastel pipette and take three drops of plasma and add it to the sediment. You can see slowly three drops is being put into the tube. After putting the plasma, keep the center, keep the pasture pipette aside and plasma aside and mix the sample with the plasma. Now next step is adding the thromboplastin. Take another pasture pipette and add three drops of thromboplastin. This is the thromboplastin. So open the thromboplastin bottle slowly and put three drops of thromboplastin into the sediment. Keep the thromboplastin aside and pasture pipette aside and mix the sediment with the plasma and the thromboplastin and Keep the tube for 5 minutes. At the end of 5 minutes, you can see a clot is formed at the bottom. So, you can see the clot is formed. Now, we have to transfer this clot into the cassette. For that, first take the cassette, tissue cassette and label the cassette with the specimen number. We can use a lead pencil for this purpose. You can see the cassette is being labeled. And the next step is put a small piece of cut paper and write to the same label for labeling the tissue block and the label is put inside the tissue cassette. The label is put inside the tissue cassette. Okay. Now, next step is open the fixative bottle and take a small Bodman number one filter paper which is cut in a small precise of rectangular shape and dip it in the fixative. Now the filter paper is flexible and we can keep the filter paper on a flat surface. It is kept on a flat surface. Okay. Now take the sediment which is clotted and just hold the soup, hold the tube in an inverted position and just tap at the bottom of the tube. Just one or two taps. The sediment will come out of the tube and it will fall into the filter paper. Now next step is wrapping the sediment with the wet filter paper. Slowly wrap carefully and keep it inside the tissue cassette and lock the tissue cassette secure. Lock it tightly and put inside the neutral buffered formaldehyde fixative. So this is the procedure. And at the end of the procedure, this cell block will go for processing as a small tissue bit. And this 
block will go through dehydration, clearing, vaccine impregnation, embedding, cutting, and staining. Five micron sections are cut from the cell block. Here you can see how the cell block will look like. And this is the sections cut and stained slide. And this is the microscopic picture of the cell block sections. Now, what are the important points? Pooled plasma can be preserved in a freezer up to one month if it is stored in one ml aliquots. At a time, one ml aliquot is used for the purpose of procedure. Thromboplastin is stored in the refrigerator at a 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. And all reagents should be brought to room temperature before use. Care should be taken to use different pipettes for pipetting plasma and a thromboplastin. If clot is not formed within 5 minutes, use fresh plasma and repeat the procedure. Fluid samples added with anticoagulants are not suitable for this technique. We have to check the expiry date of the thromboplastin before use. The advantages and disadvantages, this include, this is a simple and less tedious technique compared to other cell block techniques. Technique is very rapid and it is useful, especially when the cellular sediment is minimal or minute, and it is not so cost effective as compared to agar method. Thank you so much for your patient hearing.